This is the Atlas Agena target vehicle for the Gemini 11 mission on Monday, September 12th. At the beginning of this mission, it will enable us to evaluate some important aspects of one type of lunar rendezvous. It launches at 5 minutes past 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As the Agena goes through all phases of powered flight to orbit without incident, the Gemini 11 spacecraft is counting down on pad 19, about 90 minutes from launch. The crew, command pilot Charles Conrad and pilot Richard Gordon, will execute maneuvers for rendezvous in their first revolution with the Agena. Space scientists have taught us to call this an M equals 1 rendezvous. Gemini 11 is faced with a two-second launch window. It must launch within two seconds of the planned liftoff or be scrubbed for this day. Tracking data now tells us that the Agena is in a near circular orbit with a 156 nautical mile perigee and an apogee of 166 nautical miles. The main engines of the Gemini launch vehicle ignite within the planned two seconds. The Gemini 11 lifts off to an M equals one rendezvous. We may imagine that it is a lunar landing vehicle that has aborted its descent to the moon. It is returning to rendezvous with the mother spacecraft. We can get a measure of the crew workload and procedures in such a situation. Gemini 11 is inserted into an orbit of 149 by 86 nautical miles, almost the exact orbit called out by the flight plan. The Agena target vehicle is now beginning its second revolution. It is slightly more than 200 miles ahead of Gemini 11, but Gemini is catching up at some 500 miles an hour. On an M equals one rendezvous, events move fast. In 35 minutes, Command Pilot Conrad reported to Tananarive Tracking Station that he had the Agena in sight at about 75 miles. Over Australia, the command pilot executed his terminal phase maneuver, burning at 141 feet per second. At Hawaii, the Gemini 11 was in a braking maneuver. The command pilot came back on the air at California. We heard that now classic phrase first given by Pilot Stafford on Gemini 6 mission. Okay, we're safe to keep them. Roger, outstanding. M equals one rendezvous was performed just beyond Hawaii and performed entirely by onboard equipment supported by the backup computations of Pilot Gordon. The time, one hour and 24 minutes after launch. After a station keeping exercise, Command Pilot Conrad reported to spacecraft communicator John Young that Gemini 11 was ready for docking. Hey, John, we're gonna go ahead and dock at this time. Uh, Roger, that's, uh Okay, and you'll go for docking, over. Roger, you'll go for docking. The onboard footage in this film was shot at six frames a second and printed for normal projection. We are docked, Richard Light's on. We confirm they're docked, fine. Roger. The time of dock was one hour, 38 minutes, and 18 seconds after launch. Gemini 11 had rendezvoused and docked in the first revolution. The earliest this had been accomplished after launch in any previous Gemini mission was the third revolution. Four dockings were scheduled by Gemini 11, and four were completed. Both crew members docked the spacecraft, the command pilot twice, and the pilot twice. The crew's working day now came to an end, and they were in a sleep period. When they awoke and began their morning, it was just past midnight on the ground. The major event of the second day would be an extravehicular activity of Pilot Gordon. Gemini 11 approached the United States on its 15th revolution. Everything was ready. Now it's just past San Diego, just south of San Diego. The spacecraft hatch was opened at 24 hours, two minutes into the mission. And when we get our first look at Pilot Gordon, he is straddling the spacecraft nose in the midst of the EVA. He is attached to his spacecraft by an umbilical line which furnishes him oxygen and communications. What do we have, fella? He got it. I sure hung on something out there. Got it. 
Good show. Astronaut Gordon is removing a Dacron tether from the Agena. He will clamp it onto the Gemini docking bar for use in a stabilization exercise tomorrow. During the EVA exercise, the pilot became increasingly tired. He had lost the sight of his right eye from sweat, and rather than risk losing vision in the other, the command pilot called him in, ending the EVA after 44 minutes. Early termination of the EVA canceled an experiment using a power tool for the first time in this. On the next revolution, the hatch was opened briefly to jettison equipment associated with EVA. The crew now had a little more elbow room in their spacecraft. For the rest of the day, they worked on experiments. Eleven were in the flight plan. The crew now slept about five hours. They awoke in their 25th revolution. The mission was more than half over. At the beginning of the 26th revolution, command pilot Conrad received a go for a burn of the primary propulsion system, the PPS of the Agena. He lit the big Agena engine over the Canaries. It added a velocity of 920 feet per second to the orbit of the combined vehicles. The Agena carried Gemini 11 to a new altitude record, reaching an apogee of 739 and 4 tenths nautical miles over Australia. We are 325 miles higher than the old altitude set in July by Gemini 10. The crew remained in this orbit for two revolutions. They looked down on Earth with a view never before seen by man. They photographed that view for us with a wide-angle lens. The round curvature of the Earth stands out clearly, and it looks almost like a small globe on a table. Searching for adjectives, astronauts Conrad and Gordon said repeatedly that the sight was fantastic and unbelievable. We can only agree with them. everything hangs a vivid blue color. If there are intelligent creatures in the universe, perhaps they call us the blue planet. The flight plan allotted some three and one half hours to Gemini 11 in this orbit before the command pilot executed a retrograde burn of the Agena PPS. It decreased the orbital velocity 918 feet per second. Spacecraft and its dock target vehicle then returned to the lower orbit of 164 by 156 nautical miles. The day had been busy. For the first time since they awoke six hours ago, the crew had time to eat breakfast. The pace did not slow down. On the 29th revolution, the crew was ready to begin a third EVA for photography from an open hatch. Pilot Gordon shot synoptic terrain and weather photographs of the type familiar from past flights. He also performed an ultraviolet photography experiment. 
The stand-up EVA ended over Hawaii on the 30th revolution. It had lasted two hours, 11 minutes, setting, as the spacecraft communicator put it, a new world's outdoor record. Spacecraft and Agena had been docked since the first day. They had flown together through three EVAs and an altitude record, but now they would undock. They were going to hate to leave this Agena and get pretty kind to it. Sure has. After undocking, the command pilot pulled the tether taut. The purpose is to investigate modes of stabilizing a space vehicle during station keeping without using maneuvering fuel. At first, he had difficulty getting a top line fully extended and at one point told the ground that it was like skipping rope. Command pilot Conrad then put his spacecraft in a very slow spin of 40 degrees a minute. He made a complete revolution in nine minutes. Later, at the request of the flight director, the spin rate was increased to 55 degrees a minute. Spacecraft and Agena again stabilized on the tether. The tether is, uh, is maintaining uh, attention at all times. Uh, we're pressed. Station keeping in this mode became so uneventful that at one stage, the crew took time out for a bite to eat. After two revolutions, the tether was released by jettisoning the docking bar on the nose of the spacecraft. The tether floated erratically in space. The command pilot said it's wrapping around itself like a Christmas present. Goes 100 feet one way, then 100 feet the other way. Gemini 11 now separated from the Agena with a velocity change of 9 feet per second, and the last full day of the mission was over. As the crew slept, mission director Bill Schneider and his flight director discussed the addition of a re-rendezvous maneuver to the flight plan. And Thursday morning, the plan was discussed with the crew and agreed upon. Trailing Agena by 25 miles, Gemini 11 would essentially initiate a terminal phase maneuver and re-rendezvous. Computations would be supplied from the ground. The second mission rendezvous was made over Africa at 50 feet range. Propellant consumption was low, 65 pounds. After this, Command Pilot Conrad separated from the Agena for the last time. Gemini 11 was now slightly more than three hours from retrofire. Flight plan called for an automatic retrofire and re-entry. The onboard computer would bring the spacecraft in. The crew would jettison the equipment section, but from that point, their job was done, unless a contingency arose. On the 44th revolution over Canton Island, after more than 70 hours of flight, Gemini 11 retrofired automatically. Splashdown in the Atlantic was some 35 minutes away. In the prime recovery area, the Department of Defense put 12 aircraft into the air. Above the Rio Grande, the spacecraft entered the sensible atmosphere, usually defined as 400,000 feet altitude. It swept down across the Gulf of Mexico. After the blackout of communications ended, Gemini 11 came in with... Clear, Houston, we're right on the money with an auto. The prime recovery ship, the USS Guam, sighted Gemini 11 on the parachute. It splashed down approximately two nautical miles from the planned impact point. Atlantic Chief, this is uh, Westland Leader. Right here, in the water. Gemini 11, Sydney report. Parachute has deflated. Over. Guam report spacecraft, 5,000 yards, dead ahead. Atlantic Chief, this is Westland Leader. Flotation gear and three swimmers are in the water. Over. The hatches soon came open, and the crew left their spacecraft to enter a life raft, awaiting a helicopter pickup. Hoisted aboard the helicopter, they had a short flight this time. The Guam was less than a mile away. This crew, Command Pilot Conrad and Pilot Gordon, had flown a mission almost precisely to the flight plan. They flew a spacecraft whose systems had no malfunctions which affected mission performance. The early termination of the umbilical EVA emphasized again that we are in a learning period in a totally new and difficult discipline. When you summed it up, there were a host of new records, such as the first rendezvous and docking in the first orbit, 
a new altitude record of 739 and four-tenths nautical miles, and a record extravehicular time of three hours. And the Gemini 11 spacecraft ended its mission by demonstrating automatic or computer-controlled re-entry for the first time in manned space flight. It was a working flight that saw 10 out of 11 experiments completed successfully, and we increased three of those experiments, 25 to 30 percent. Re-rendezvous was added to the flight plan and performed satisfactorily. In the tether experiment, we not only opened up new possibilities for station keeping of space vehicles, but we created the first small artificial gravity field with a spin rate of 55 degrees per minute. Spacecraft 11, the next to last Gemini vehicle, had now taken its place in the manned space program of the United States. <laughs>